So in this video we're going to show you how to enroll and install the uh, remote temperature and flood sensor. Now this device is very handy because it can do multiple things. It can do two things at once or just one. One can be a flood sensor which is what we have it set up for. It can also do flood and low temperature, flood and high temperature, or it can just be a temperature center, a sensor. Uh, detecting if something is getting too cold, like in a house, maybe you have a vacation home, you want to know how cold it is, this is a sensor to use. Uh, make sure nothing happens to your vacation home so nothing freezes. Uh, or you have a freezer, you want to detect if it, if it rises above freezing temperature. This is the temperature, or this is the device to use. So what we're going to do is remove the lid, we install the battery. In this particular uh, case, we're going to use the flood sensor that came with it, as we used that, chose that option. I've installed it through the back hole here, and installed it into the screw down terminals, and they're not polarity sensitive, so it doesn't matter which wire goes to which. And you'll notice that there's a resistor, and you'll also notice the dip switch. So it's important for us to look on page three of our instruction manual, because we'll see how to set it up. Now you have all these different scenarios. In each one of these, you have to look at the chart going all the way across. Now, as an example, we're going to use flood sensing only with this sensor. It's telling us that the dip switch setting should be switch 1 off, switch 2 on. So, looking right here, there's a dip switch. On is opposite the end of the number, so 1 is off and 2 is on. It's telling us that it did require the resistor. Now there was a small resistor that came in the package. It's telling us that we need to use that. So I've installed it here along with the wires. Again, it doesn't matter which way it goes in. And when I'm done, I'm just going to fold it over gently and keep it underneath the antenna wires that you see there and inside the casing so it doesn't get caught up in the mechanism of uh, the shutting mechanism of this lid. Okay, so now let's learn our device in. Let's go to zones, find the zone, a zone we want to put it on, and the serial number, all we have to do is press this white panic button. Again, we're listening for the three beeps. There's one, I press it again, I should get two beeps, and press it a third time and I should get three beeps to confirm. So our device is learned in. Now, this is important for our loop number. It says loop number four. But in my chart for flood sensing, I look right here and it's saying that my loop number should be three. So I'm going to change this just by pressing. There's one, two, three. So loop number three. So now I'm set up for flood sensing with this device. So I'm going to tell it, give it a description. There's flood. Actually, I'm going to change that to water. Wall, wall, water. There we go. And I'm going to change this to sensor. Safe second, sensor. Device type, drop down here, and you'll see one called flood. 24 auxiliary, hour auxiliary. In other words, I don't want this to only go off when the system's armed. I want it to send a signal. 24-7 if something happens, if it starts flooding. So I leave it in 24-hour auxiliary. It means it's not an alarm, but the monitoring station will get a signal, and you will get a signal if you have the remote alert device saying that the sensor has detected water. And then you can take the proper action. Alarm reported, yes. I do not want to chime, so I'm going to cycle through until I get to disabled. There's disabled. Definitely want it supervised. I want to know the condition of this sensor and the battery at all times. And I hit save. So you've just learned in this device for flood. And if you, you're using it for multiple purposes, like the uh, flood and cold temperature setting, or cold temp setting and freezer temp, just make sure you uh, set the dip switch settings to the proper setting. Use the proper uh, probe and make sure that your loop number is set accordingly. 